Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We'll read one verse as our keynote scripture, but we will go through several verses in the context of tonight's message as the Lord gives utterance. 1 Corinthians 12 and 31. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Amen. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Look at somebody and say, there is a more excellent way. Hallelujah. There is a more excellent way. God says our ways, hallelujah, are right in our own eyes, but he has a more excellent way. Sounds like that way that princess was talking about. Hallelujah. Following the good directions, the directions of the Lord. There is a more excellent way. In first Corinthian, Paul expounds on the gifts of the spirit. He opens up the passage in the beginning of first Corinthians saying now brethren concerning spiritual gifts I would not have you ignorant he goes into breaking down the diversities of gifts but how they are of the same spirit but to the understanding that it is God that worketh in them all so there may be a diversities of gifts but there are many members in one body with each part in the gifts to be able to uh, not only occupy space but to be able to bring those gifts to the altar for the utterance and for the use of the kingdom of God. So Paul had a situation with the Corinthian church where uh, there was a uh, concern and he says I won't have you ignorant. I won't have you in, in conflict. I won't have you in contention and uh, I won't have you in comparison and we'll find out later how Paul uh, breaks down the different parts of the gifts. He says uh, he leads them to a way that there is a, a more excellent way. In verse 8 he says but now has God set the members every one of them in the body as it had pleased them and if they were all one member where were the body but now are they many members yet but one body and that I cannot say unto the hand I have no need of thee nor again the head to the feet I have no need of you every part needs each part look at somebody and say I need you and I think you need me we all need one another Paul says that I cannot say unto the hand that I have no need of thee nor again the head to the feet I have no need of you because in Corinthians in the Corinthian church, they were um, discussing and they were talking about it or, or having a conversation about what, what part works with what part. So Paul, has to, Paul had to teach the Corinthian church that it, there is a part for everybody's part, uh, but don't get mixed up about your part. Everybody has uh, their part, and there is a more excellent way. Uh, he says, nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable upon these we bestow more abundant honor and our uncommonly parts have more abundant comeliness for our comely parts have no need but God have tempered the body together having given more abundant honor to the part which lack in other words Paul was saying uh, that do, do not disannul don't uh, dishonor the weaker vessels of the church or those that are not on high or have as high of a calling as you have uh, and feel like they don't have a place in the kingdom of God because everybody uh, the body of Christ needs every part of the body. Everybody can't occupy the same gift and everybody can't do the same part. The hand needs the fingers just like the back needs the legs and the legs need the feet. Hallelujah like the neck needs the head and the head needs the neck like the neck needs the stomach and the stomach. Hallelujah every part Paul breaks down there are diversities of gifts many members in one body so don't dishonor one because you're honoring another for our calmly parts have no need but God have tempered the body together God put us all together for the unity of the church for the edifying of the body of Christ for the building up of the kingdom of God he says in verse 25 that there should be no schism meaning no division 
uh, in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. So he breaks down that there should be no need for uh, favoritism and there should be no need for division, but being able to have love right one towards another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Uh, this breaks down uh, the ability for somebody to rejoice over somebody else's downfall or for somebody else to smile all over somebody else's rebuke. Uh, Paul says, whether one member suffer, all members suffer. And when one member rejoice, all shall rejoice. So in other words, he was saying, when we have that right love uh, one towards another, you don't rejoice at somebody else's slip up. Uh, and when somebody slips up, you don't rejoice over it. Uh, but you, because you are a help in the body of Christ and because you have that part one to another, you don't laugh at their calamity, but you lift them up uh, in the spirit of God. Because one thing about a gift, a gift is uh, as a family and as a unified church uh, when you're really joined together you are really together there is no schism, there is no division there is no discord uh, whether one member suffer, all members suffer, so when one person is down we all should be down, but when one person is up, you should be rejoicing uh, it makes no sense in the body of Christ, if, if I get a blessing somebody can't rejoice with me, but I can't and I can't rejoice with somebody else's blessing, uh, but the Bible says Paul Paul says there has to be a more excellent way, and the excellent way is the God's way. Now, ye are the body of Christ, and many members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Then he says, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles. Everybody can't do the everything, but everybody does have a part. Everybody can't be the apostles, but somebody can be the prophet. Everybody can't be the prophet, but somebody got to be a teacher. The only way we're going to really build the church together and to build it effectively uh, is everybody doing their part. Uh, so tell somebody, everybody can't occupy, or one person can't occupy, hallelujah, the, the same space. Hallelujah. We have one pastor. Hallelujah. We have many members, uh, and we have one, uh, we have many leaders in this house. Uh, but everybody can't be the head of the house. He says, have all the gifts of healing. Uh, can you imagine what the church would be like if everybody was walking around with just the mouth or if everybody was walking around with just the ears uh, or if everybody was walking around with just the eyes? Uh, what would we do uh, strategically uh, right for the kingdom of God? Uh, somebody got to be the mouthpiece for God. Somebody got to be the help in God. Uh, somebody got to be the feet to walk this word out. Uh, and somebody got to be the hand. Uh, so when we all work together right for the body of Christ, uh, not being in comparison and not being in contention, uh, but working hand to hand uh, and operating in our part. Look at somebody say, it's got to be in your part. Uh, hallelujah. Because what happens in, in the church is uh, we get confused about our part. Uh, but the effectiveness of the kingdom uh, is blessed more abundantly uh, by the church doing uh, their part. Uh, the Bible says, but cover earnestly the best best gifts and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Paul had to shed some light because of the contention of the comparison of the gifts. The different gifts are the different parts, uh, but they all function for the body. The way God designed each part of our body is the blueprint model for understanding how our lives work together in the church. Uh, every part is dependent upon every part. Uh, every part can't be the same part. Uh, like Keisha is gifted at in, 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 in administrating in the kitchen ministry. I, I can't cook. Uh, that's her very good part. Uh, but I can commit to bringing some drinks. Uh, or I can try to make a dish. Uh, when I get together with what her gift is, uh, then we can be effective in the body of Christ. Uh, everybody can be a help. Uh, anybody can be a healing. Uh, but everybody can't be the one part. Uh, everybody can't be Minister Williams. Uh, everybody can help the senior minister. Everybody can't be the senior minister. Everybody can help the pastor, but everybody can't be the pastor's wife. Everybody can help one another, but everybody can't do every part. Tell somebody, understand your
your part. What would the body be if the eye said, I don't need the mouth? Or the ear said, I don't need the nose? Or the leg said, I don't need the feet? Every part of the body is needed to break down what it needs to break down and to build up the muscles and the tissues and the arteries and everything else that functions for the body of Christ. So he addressed the covetousness that the church had with the conflict earnest. He said, earnestly, the best gift. The more excellent way is the righteous way. Proverbs 12 and 26 says, the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduces them. Never let the way of the Lord uh, seduce you from the righteous way of God. Or never let the way of the wicked seduce you from uh, the righteous way of God. God's way is always the best way. The best way is the righteous way, uh, and the righteous way is the way of the word, uh, and the way of the word is orchestrated by the lips of God. Uh, the Bible says that he has given us the word as his living inspiration for what he will have us do with the inspired word of God. But the only way to walk in the inspired word is to know the inspired word, to be inspired in the word that he has given us, to not have to be encouraged by doing the work of the Lord, but to walk in the word of God, to walk in his way and not be in the way. Tell somebody, let's do the righteous way because the righteous way is a more excellent way. But what happens is the enemy seduces us out of uh, the righteous way. Uh, he distracts us. He divides us. He detours us. Uh, he put conflict and contentions uh, on the inside of us. Uh, but if our walk is walking in the way of the righteousness, uh, in the way of the straight and the narrow, like Princess said, uh, following the directions and the instructions of the Holy Ghost, uh, we're going in the excellent way. Uh, and the excellent way is the purest way. Uh, it's the purest form. Uh, and the enemy, the Bible says a threefold cord uh, is not easily broken. Uh, but you got to be straight on the straight and narrow walking in the righteous way the righteousness of God is the more excellent way the next way is the decent and in order way first Corinthians 14 and 40 says let all things be done decent and in order you don't have an excellent way without having the, the God-fearing way, the decent and an order way. The Bible says every man's way is right in his own eyes. Our ways and our eyes are not always decent and in order because we'll figure out like we talked about in Sunday school this morning, Judah amen, thought that their way was right because of the way that they saw it. All they saw was uh, Jeremiah's prophecy against the land. Uh, but God says, I have a more decent uh, and a more in order way uh, that if you'll walk right and live right and do it right, uh, I can guarantee uh, a more excellent way. The Bible says he told Israel to not go to the left nor to the right, uh, but look to the hills from whence coming my help. Uh, he says, I'm calling you to go northward uh, because if you go southward uh, you're straying away from the decent and an order way one thing about being decent and in an order it, it causes structure to flow right it causes the things of the Lord to flow right it causes uh, uh, the matters to flow right it, it's just a blessed peace and assurance uh, of God that happens when things just begin to flow decently and in order tell somebody we got to be decent uh, and in order to operate in God's most excellent way because his way uh, is an excellent way and God's way is always decent. Uh, his way is always orderly. Uh, his way is not confused. Uh, his way is not misled. Uh, his way is not misread. Uh, his way is not misunderstood. Uh, his way is decent. So, tell somebody decency is uh, to be dressed uh, uh, appropriately uh, not just in the matters of the physical but in the way of the spirit. Uh, God says decent uh, and in order. And if we are this content concerning the way that should tell you that there is a more excellent way hallelujah because the way of the lord is right his paths are pondered about with peace pleasure and prosperity uh, and I don't know about you but I just like the peace of God uh, I like the pleasures of God and I like the prosperity of God and I've just found out the hard way uh, that God has a more excellent way uh, that gives me peace excellence brings you peace uh, excellence brings you pleasures uh, excellence brings you prosperity uh, why because it allows things to just flow I don't know if you've ever been in a in, in, a, in the water where you see the ocean and the waters the, the waves just 
flowing. That's how God does when your life is decent and in order. He makes the blessings just flow right. He, when stuff is just indecently and in order, when you're going about things the right way, hallelujah, he'll just give you a more excellent way. Uh, if you are not happy of the way, uh, that means God has a better way. Uh, that means he has a more excellent way, uh, a way to show you that this is the way, uh, the truth and the life. He said, I am the way, uh, that if you follow me, uh, you're following the excellent way. If you follow the Lord, uh, you're following the right way. If you follow his path, uh, you're following the excellent way because straight, great, great is the Lord uh, and greatly is to be praised. Uh, but he says, I am the way. His way is straight. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a victory hand clap of praise. Uh, he walked 42 generations uh, on an excellent path. It wasn't a pleasurable path, but it was an excellent path. Uh, he paved the way of righteousness for those that will come behind him uh, and say, God, I'm following you. 